So now that we can convert between fraction notation and decimal notation, we want to take a, a closer look at decimal notation. In the first two sections of chapter R, we were looking at fractions and adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing them. I know we have to know how to combine them if we see them. So we're going to do the same with decimals. How do I add and subtract them, multiply and divide them? So simplest case we're going to look at is addition first. So addition and subtraction with decimal notation involves what? Lining up the decimals, then working from the thousandths to the hundredths and so on. So we start with the smallest place value all the way on the right deal with him first, and then move to the left up to the larger whole numbers. So, let's do that first example. Add 49, 24.35, and that small decimal together. So, we need to have them all lined up. So I'm going to say 49, and I'm adding 24.35. So, we, again, we have to line up the decimals. And what else do we have? We've got 0 0.93003, and I'm adding all of those together. So don't forget to write your operand out on the front. What operation are we looking at? So again, starting from the smallest place value, working our way in. We're really just going to add, adding in our columns. So 3, excuse me, plus 0 is 3. Zero, zero. So now I'm looking at five, six, seven, eight all together in that column. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I've got a two, and I need to carry the one. Wherever the decimal point is, is where it's still going to stay in in the end. So we can draw that in. And in this row, we're looking at uh, 14. So I've got the four, carry the one, four, five, six, seven all together. So adding those three numbers together, we're looking at 74.28003. Okay, subtraction, just the same, but again, operation's different. So I'm subtracting 76.13. From that, I'm taking away 23.765. Okay. So, in this case, we're working with subtraction. So, I'm going to go ahead and put in placeholders for any factors that I'm missing up in this first number that I'm going to have to be subtracting from. So, 7 has a buddy, 6 has a buddy, 5 does not. So, I can add a factor of 0, not changing anything, because we can add 0 to anything, and it won't change that number. So, what are we looking at? Again, starting from the right, moving to the left. 5 minus 0, so I need to borrow from next door. And I'm looking at 5. Taking 5 out of 10, I'm left with 5. Again, 6 I can't take out of 2, so I need to borrow from next door. We're left with 6. Same story, I can't take 7 out of 0, so I need to borrow. So I've got a 3 left there. Wherever the decimal point stands, it will be there in the end, so we can draw it in. Kind of hard to see with my name tag in the way, sorry. And we can take 3 out of 5. We'll be left with 2. And 2 out of 7. We'll be left with 5. So 52.365. So it still fits your general connotation with how you add and subtract numbers. But you just have to line up the decimals. Because I don't want to be subtracting, you know, 9 tenths from the 40th, 40th placeholder. Because that's not going to make sense. Okay, so addition and subtraction, we got it down. Multiplication with decimal notation, you can do it in two different ways. I'll show you both, but in this class you can't have a calculator. So I feel like one is a lot more uh, substantial for you to learn. The other way is kind of more calculator based. So, and if you have a calculator, why do it by hand anyway? Just punch it in the calculator. So, I'm going to show you anyway, both ways. Way number one, what happens? So I'm multiplying 5.14 times 0.8. So, way one, what are we doing? We ignore the decimal. Decimal. And multiply as whole numbers. As whole numbers. Okay, 
So we can do that first. So I'm going to have 514 times 8, ignoring the decimal places for now. We can multiply those, and what are we going to get? 8 times 4 is 32. 8 times 1 is 8 plus another 3. 9, 10, 11. All right. 5 times 8 is 40, plus another 1 will give me 41. Then, once we have that number calculated, then add in the number of decimals that we had in both of those numbers. So, add number of decimal places. Places in the original numbers. So all together, how many did I have? I had one, two, three all together. So I need to move my decimal place in one, two, three, and leave it there. So multiplying those two numbers together, we're looking at 4.112. So I think this is a practical way for us to go. We're going to use way one. Way two will also work. We convert each of these from decimal notation into fraction notation, multiply them together, then put the decimals back in. So it's very similar, but setup-wise, I feel like this is going to work better for us in this class. So, just to show you way two, what are we doing? We'll take the same exact number so you can see we do get the same thing back out. But, converting 5.14 into fraction notation, what is it looking like? So, one, two decimal places. I'm looking at 514 divided by 100 times 0.8 as a fraction, 8 divided by 10. So we can multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom, and we get the same number, divided by 10,000. Excuse me, 1,000. We've got 1, 2, 3. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Math is really not what it is. Okay, so 1,000. So, to convert back into decimal notation, what do we got to do? We've got one, two, three factors down here. I need to move my decimal point one, two, three factors in. So, 4.112. So, whichever one you're more comfortable with, you can run with. You can still do this off in the margin, that multiplication, like we did in the beginning. You'll get there. But I feel like this is a little bit more complicated than what we need. This will get us there kind of in one step rather than converting a bunch of times because I feel like we can introduce a lot of errors this way. So, kind of stick with this one, but again, if you're more comfortable working over here, fine, run with it. So, we hit addition, subtraction, multiplication, what's left? Division. So, division with decimal notation involves lining up the decimal places again. That always has to happen. So, decimal point of the quotient directly above the decimal point of the dividend. Funny words. We'll do an example. You'll see what we're talking about. And acting as if they're whole numbers and just doing division. So, that first example, I want to divide 8 into 54. So, where are my decimal places? Right there, right there. So, I'm taking 54, that number. Come on, little marker and dividing it by 8. Okay. So, where does my decimal point have to end up in the end? Wherever it is in the dividend, it has to be in the quotient. So, write it right above. That should be the very first thing after you set up your division, write in where the decimal point is going to happen. I think I just erased it. Hmm, there we go. All right, then we act as if they're whole numbers and just do the division. So, does 8 go into 5? Nope, too big. So, how many times does 8 go into 54 without going over? 6 times 8 is 48. And again, we look at that difference. So, subtracting 48 from 54, we're left with 6. And I also have to bring down the next digit. So, we can add as many zeros as we're going to need. If you want to write them in the beginning, fine. We might not even need that many. And now we ask, 8 times what will give me close to 60 without going over? 8 times 7. 
7 times 8 is 56. If I look at that difference, I'm left with 4. Bring down the next digit, looking at 40. And multiplying 8 times something to get me close to 40 without going over goes in exactly 5 times. So 5 times 8 is 40. And when we have a remainder of 0, we know we're done. It divides evenly. Remainder. If we don't have a remainder, awesome, we're done. So equivalently, during this division, we get out 6.75. So let's do some more. Mm, I'll put it up here. So 682.1 divided by 38. So again, first thing we should always do in these examples. Where is my decimal down here? It needs to be in the same place up there. And we can ask, does 38 go into 6? Nope. Too small, so 38 into adding another digit. 38 into 68 goes in one time. So I can look at the difference. I'm looking at 30. 38 doesn't go into 30, it's too large, so we need to bring down the next place value. How many times can 38 go into 302 without going over? If you don't know that one, that's fine. Seven times. Seven times 38, I have to look at what it is, is 266. And you can do those off in the margin. Looking at that difference, what do we have? 36. Again, 38 doesn't go into 36, so we need the next value down. 38 into 361. How many times does it go in without going over? 9. 9 times that guy gives me 3, 4, 2. Looking at that difference, I've got 19 left over. What can I bring down? 0. 38 into 190, how many times? 5, exactly. So, I hit a remainder of 0. That tells me, hey, I'm done. Divides evenly, that's what I'm left with. Alright, so give it a shot. 32 divided by 25. What are you looking at? So we take 32, its so decimal point is right there, divided by 25. Wherever the decimal point is down here, it's going to have to be up in the quotient. We can add zeros if we're going to need them. We'll see. So, how many times does 25 go into 32 without going over? Once. If we look at the difference between those two, we're left with 7. 25 doesn't go into 7, so we have to bring a factor of 0 down. How many times can 25 go into 70 without going over? Two times. And then we're looking at 50, so that's a difference of 20. 25 isn't going into 20, so we need to bring down another 0. And ask 25, how many times does it go into 200? Exactly 8. So looking at that difference, remainder of 0, so we know we are done. 1.28 when we do that division. So this last example is really important because... What do you notice that's different about this division than what we've just previously seen? Is there anything kind of throwing you off? Before, we were always dividing by what over here? Whole number, and now I have a decimal. So if I go to write my, my division over here, 0 0.024, I'm dividing 20.544 by that thing. I can't treat them as whole numbers because I have these factors of 10 that I'm just going to magically disappear. I can't have that happen. So how can we convert this guy to a whole number first? What has to happen? So we can convert everything. If I move the decimal places in one of the numbers, I have to do the same in the other. So how many do I have to move to be working with the whole number here? One, two, three decimal places. So if I change this by a factor of 100, I have to change this one by a factor of 1 to 100 as well. So we can rewrite this division as what? Equivalently, 
24 on the outside, whole number, divided by what? If I move the decimal place all the way to the right, 20,544. Now we can just ask the same questions. Treat them both as whole numbers now that we don't have a decimal out front. So 24 into 20 isn't going to work. I'm going to draw in my decimal place. So we're asking 24 into 205 how many times without going over? Eight of them. Eight times 24 gives me 192. Looking at that difference, we're left with 13. 24 doesn't go into 13, so we need to bring down the next value. 24 into 134. How many times without going over? We're looking at five. So, 5 times 24 gives me 120. Looking at the difference, we're left with 14. And bringing down the next value, since 24 doesn't go into 14, how many times does 24 go into 144 without going over? 6, exactly. We don't have a remainder, so we stop there. I didn't really need to write our decimal point, but it's necessary. So, dividing those numbers, what do we get out? 856.